I showed last time how price density can be used to measure noise across different assets, with the intention that this can then help to inform which symbols will trade most effectively with different types of strategy. This time I do the same, but using the efficiency ratio developed by Perry Kaufman. So which of these methods works best, or are they equally as good as each other? Stay tuned. For all aspects of trading, there are multiple ways of achieving an outcome. That's what makes it so interesting as you endeavour to identify the processes, rules and tools that will work best for you. And measuring noise is no exception. So following our use of price density last time, I now turn my attention to the efficiency ratio. I'll be performing the same analysis as last time across the same range of assets and classes and then comparing the outcome achieved with that of using price density. Let's make a start. So we now move into a little bit more detail at looking at the second method of measuring noise, which is the efficiency ratio. And just like last time, we looked at 42 different assets and saw how they stacked up in terms of price density. We now do the same for this second method. And as a reminder, one of the reasons we might want to do this is because the intelligence we gain can then help us to decide which assets are best suited to different classes or types of trading strategy. So let's take a closer look. Now, the first thing I want to bring to your attention is how the interpretation of the efficiency ratio is different to that of price density. With price density, higher values represented higher levels of noise. But here, higher values represent higher levels of efficiency in the price action, and higher efficiency equates to lower noise. And so likewise, these lower values on the left-hand side here are less efficient and therefore exhibit higher noise. Now, if you saw that previous episode, there'll be one obvious difference here. And that is that the stock indices in green and the four commodities in red appear to be much more evenly interspersed across this range of assets. Whereas using the price density calculation, they were all over the right hand side of the chart, meaning that they had lower levels of noise. And so clearly the choice of the use of price density or the efficiency ratio is going to give us very different results when we start to use this in our trading strategies. But as of yet, of course, we don't know which one is most effective. And before we compare these two indicators side by side, I just want to talk a little bit again about asset classification. And so when we're classifying in terms of noise, there are generally a couple of approaches we could use. Just like we did with price density, we can draw a line right down the middle of the assets here. And because those assets to the right of this line are more efficient and exhibit lower levels of noise, this should, if the theory is correct, make these assets much more suitable to momentum-based trend following strategies. And conversely, the assets on the left should be more suitable to mean reversion type strategies. But just like last time, there's an alternative approach we can take where we can be a lot more selective about how high or low we require that noise to be. And this has the effect of giving us this section in the middle where we don't actually trade any of these assets with those types of strategies. So let's now take a look at these side by side to see how each of these different mechanisms of measuring noise compare. So I've ranked both of these so that the assets on the right hand side of the screen represent low levels of noise and the assets on the left represent high levels of noise. And the reason behind why each of the charts slopes in a different direction is just because of the different interpretation of those calculations. So let's now start to look at a few individual assets to see where they fall on this spectrum of assets. So if we look at the first asset here, which is the Australian dollar Kiwi dollar, 
we see that both noise measurement techniques actually classify this as the most noisy. So in terms of consistency, that's a good start. Let's now move along to pound New Zealand dollar. And here, although there's a small difference in the ranking, they're both classified as having very high levels of noise. Let's move along again to pound Australian dollar. And here, they both get ranked third in that list of noisy assets. So again, we do appear to have quite a bit of consistency here. Swiss yen, a little bit more difference, but they're both certainly in the top third of the ranking. And then the closeness of pound CAD comes together again a little. So in terms of the upper end and the classification of these high noise assets, I'd say there's a lot of consistency between the two measurements, which of course is what we'd probably expect. But let's now take a look at the other end of the spectrum. And here, we can start with natural gas. And again, a little bit of a difference, but they're certainly both in the lowest noise quartile. Moving up one, we get to the Japanese Nikkei, and again, there's consistency. Next, the Nasdaq, and again, these are very close together. Now, just like I explained last time, all of these calculations were performed on the H1 charts. But as I've alluded to before, we're also going to look at how noise is impacted across different time frames. And this is going to be the subject of the next episode. And here, you might find some of the results a little bit more surprising. And then following this time frame analysis, we're going to move on in a future episode to look at the concept of noise filtering, firstly based on assets. And so I'll be looking at how asset selection can directly impact the performance of these two types of strategy, trend following and mean reversion. And then following this, we'll do exactly the same for time frames. So it's not going to be long now before we can start to look directly at the potential impact on performance of these types of trading strategies. Now, if you're getting value from these videos, please do remember to give me a like. That's always very appreciated. But now, until next time, trade safe.